show you an easier way to remember and practice the reverse sinuali um, without using the sticks. I know that um, in Filipino martial arts or in stick arts, especially in Arnie's Kelly or Eskrima, um, for beginners and intermediate, you are required to learn the weapon first, so using the sticks and then transition to knives and then if you're really into the advanced program or the advanced training side, <clears throat> that's the only time that you're going to practice the empty hand. But for a lot of beginners and intermediate, it's kind of difficult to, should I say, uh, remember and practice using the weapon because it's counterintuitive. And that's what um, Filipino martial arts is about, being counterintuitive. And they're kind of like the odd part of martial art where they really don't follow the majority of the martial arts discipline. Martial arts discipline, as we all know, first start with the empty hand and then they transition to weapons as you progress. And FMA does that. So this video is going to explain to you the easier part, or at least somewhat easier part of doing the reverse sinuality using the hands and without using any weapons. The reason why I wanted to share this is because not a lot of beginners and intermediate practitioners um, don't have the time, and if they don't have the time, they don't have the space, and if they don't have the space, they either don't have both, or worse, they don't have any weapons or any objects to practice with. So, this hope this video will help you. Yeah. Okay. After um, saying all of that, the uh, motion that you can practice, most especially when you're just sitting down, so you're just going to practice your hand-eye coordination and studying the uh, body mechanics of doing the reverse sinuality, is doing this motion. Like so. As you all know, the um, normal sinuality or should I say the Heaven 6 or uh, some uh, Filipino martial arts systems, what they call it, would uh, let you start from either the right or the left where your um, power hand is on top and your non-power hand, which is most likely your lead hand, would be at the bottom. So you're going to start from here and then you do the Heaven 6. It doesn't matter if you're targeting the head portion or if you're combining the head and the midsection or if you're also including the lower section so like so that'll be the normal sinuali the reverse sinuali is as the name implies the reverse but the problem with that is it's not natural for people especially beginners and intermediate, to um, associate <coughs> the reverse sinuality with um, body mechanics. Because first off, it starts low, and then it lets you cross your arms, which makes it a little bit more confusing. And so doing the anti-hand version, as I'm going to do in this video really, really slow, will um, hopefully help you in uh, practicing this without using the sticks. Keep in mind though that if you're practicing FMA, you still want to practice all of the uh, Filipino martial arts um, curriculum using the sticks. So this video is just going to help you understand the reverse sinuali um, without using the sticks. If um, you're unfortunate to not have anything to practice with, like a pen, stick, bloom stick, whatever. So, from this motion, the first thing that you would want to do is to have your Leo dominant hand, which is your power hand. Power hand would be your hand that you mostly use in doing things like writing, catching a ball, pitching the ball, playing baseball, or shooting basketball, all that stuff. So that would be your dominant hand. So if you're right-hander, then your dominant hand is your right hand. So you use your dominant hand and you place it at the center going from the bottom, from your side, right side, going 
to the center line, having your palm facing them. Hopefully you can see that. Like so. And then your non lead hand, which if you're a right-hander will be your left, you're going to just put it over your right, crossing the center line. And you'd want to have both forearms crossed this way. Like so. So from the side view here, dominant hand, if you're a right-hander, you're going to use your right, from the bottom, palm face up, raise it up, up to the chest level, keeping it at the center or slightly across the center, palm facing up still, and then your non-dominant hand will cross over your dominant hand, forearm to forearm, crossing the center. So if I'm going to do it in a medium pace, it's going to look like this. Like so. So just that. Now, from this position, in order to do the other side, you just do the reverse. So from the top, which is your non-dominant hand, you'll now go to the bottom, palm face up, like so. And your dominant hand now will just Flip over. So again, from this side, non-dominant hand, face up, crossing the center line, like so. Your dominant hand will now, from the bottom, a while ago will now be on top, so you're just going to flip this over. So again, from a square one, dominant hand, now we do the second step, like so. So, so if you're really uh, not catching up with the body mechanics yet, this is really, really good to uh, help you in doing the reverse single wally at the beginning stage. So it's going to be like this, touch, like so. And then, there. Now after you've done doing that, you may want to um, speed it up. But in order to speed up, I really don't mean that you're just going to do the motion fast because that will really, um, first and foremost, hurt your shoulder because you're kind of like overextending your shoulder in a natural way. But if you're going to do it really, really fast, you're going to hyperextend and you're going to have shoulder injuries. Um, aside from that, you're also going to have elbow injuries because you're doing it flimsily like this. And doing it too fast will also lead to that kind of injury, hyperextending your elbow and whatnot. So what I meant by doing fast is to make it more fluid. So instead of just doing this, you're now going to make it into one fluid motion. So it's going to be like so. So from the top, from the bottom here, like so. It's kind of like before you're doing it in a robotic fashion. Now you're kind of like imagining that you're having a ball or trying to hold a ball in front of you and then you're deflating. So you're inflating the ball and then deflating the ball. So from back to square one, I'm going to do the same motion as from the beginning stage. But this time, from this position, we're now going to imagine that we're going to inflate a ball in front of us. So it's going to be like so. You're Non-dominant hand will rise up. Dominant hand will go to your right side if you're a right-hander. Imagine that you're inflating a ball right here. And then you're going to cross them over. So you're not, your dominant hand now is right on top. Your non-dominant hand is right at the bottom. And then you just cross them, deflating the ball, like so. Do it on your other side, same thing. Inflate. Cross over, deflate. Raise, inflate, cross over, deflate. Now after doing that, you may want to now go to the next stage, which is the third stage of this, where you would want to have both of your hands now on your dominant side. So as I already uh, told you, your dominant side, your dominant hand would be the hand that you're using every day, most likely. 
and your non-dominant hand constantly just helps your dominant hand. So your dominant side, if you are a right-hander, obviously it will be your right side. So both of your hands are here. It doesn't matter what kind of position, as long as both of your hands are here. Don't worry about the twisting of your waist or twisting of your hips for now. Um, it might look like you're doing it wrong, especially if your uh, left heel, if your right-hander raises up, that's okay because we're not really concentrating on that right now. We're just concentrating on how to remember the body mechanics, especially the arms, in doing your reverse body. So both of your hands are on your dominant side, and you're going to do the same motion as in square one. So square one is going to be here. Number one, your dominant hand again, still goes to the center, palm facing up. But now you see the non-dominant hand automatically um, is on top. From this position right here again, do it here. See, it's already crossed the ball. And then you do the same thing here, but this time, as you transfer to your non-dominant side, which is my left, your now non-dominant hand will do, will mimic what your dominant hand did a while ago. So it's going to go to the left side, cross over, uh, cross over, go below, and then cross over your um, center line, now being at the bottom of your dominant hand. Then just turn your palm over from your dominant hand. So as I do it again from this side. Like so. Now if you're going to do both sides almost simultaneously in a very slow motion, it'll be like this. So I do it from the side view here. So I start from my right side, which is my dominant side. Like so. Okay, again, after we've learned that, you may want to do the fast version of it, so it's going to be more fluid. So, in doing so, it's going to look like this. You're going to still um, follow the concept of rising, raising your hand, or, um, the hand that's on top, and then imagining you're, that you're inflating a ball in front of you, crossing it over, and then deflating it. So, as I do it here from my dominant side, raise it up, inflate the ball, then Cross it over my non dominant hand, deflate the ball. Just do it here, like so. But instead of just doing it in front, you're now going to include the side. So from here on this side, I inflate the ball on my non dominant side, this side. And then I cross my non dominant hand here, deflate. Also do the same on my right side, inflate the ball here on my dominant side, then cross it over here. So do it side view, this side, inflate, inflate here, inflate, inflate. Now after you've done the third stage, you may want to do the final stage, which is going to make, it, make your movements more compact and more fluid. So instead of just doing this, then you inflate the ball here on your non-dominant side and then cross your non-dominant hand over here, doing it in a robotic motion. You may want to make it more fluid now by slowly um, chop, or should I say connecting the dots into one straight line, so to speak. So from this side, it's going to be like so. Deflate, 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 inflate. Once you get that, um, you may want to make your movements more compact up until you 
get to this portion. So you can see this is already the reverse seat wally just using the hand. If it's not clear enough, you may want to have a pen or anything small in your office or if you're sitting on a table right now, I just have a small pipe in my hand just to show or for demonstration purposes, I'm okay, doing it on my thumb inside now. So before, you now see the reverse in the wally without holding anything, so you're just using your hands simultaneously and smoothlessly inflating and deflating the ball. Now, with something to hold on, it's going to look like this. View. Like so. Now, once you've uh, learned that and now uh, you're really proficient in doing that practice, um, you're going to notice that doing that drill or doing that exercise for uh, Filipino martial arts, stick arts, um, helps you see only two camps because you're just doing two movements. Even though you're starting from the sides, so it's going to be one, two, one, two. But we all know that the reverse Sinovali is broken into three camps. So the three camps is um, actually helping you look at the end part of the reverse in the wally. And by the end part, you know, what I meant is if you're holding a stick, then that will be the end part of the reverse in the wally. So from here, you're going to do the three counts. So it's going to be instead of one, two, you're now going to break them into three counts. So it's going to be one, two, and as you inflate the ball, the hand that's in front of you will be the third strike. So it's three. So do it from the side view here. So do it from the side. So instead of simultaneously crossing and inflating the ball, deflating it, going to the other side, it's going to be broken down into three parts. So from this side it's going to be one, one. This hand now, the hand on top, will now cross, like do a swinging motion. Two, and as you inflate the ball, the hand in front of me now becomes a third strike. So it's three, one, two, inflate, three, one, sweep down, two, inflate the ball, three, one, two, three. So if you're going to do it in a semi-medium pace, it's going to look like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. So if you're going to do it in a fluid motion, it's not going to be like this, as I've shown earlier. It's not going to be in a broken beat. So it's not going to be in a full circle, as you just do this. It's going to look like this. So I, going, so I do it side view for you to see the difference. So instead of doing this, which just two counts, you're now going to do it in a broken beat, so to speak. So it's one, two, three, 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 one, two. And as we all know, once you get that, especially if you're constantly practicing and doing a whole lot of repetitions of doing this, um, you might want to now make your moves compact. So instead of just doing the huge movements like this, even if you're sitting down in a chair, um, you may want to make your moves smaller and smaller up until you're going to do this motion. It's going to be really, really fast. And 
what will happen is if you're holding a stick, or if you're imagining that you're holding a stick, your stick will um, cover this box here, this area right here. So your hands will most likely stay at the center, but your sticks will cover this area. Like so. If you do this. Same thing with the Sinawali. So uh, there you have it. And, uh, hopefully, this kind of drill will help you understand more in doing the reverse Sinawali. Because I know that reversing the wilding is really counterintuitive and it's really, really hard to understand, especially for intermediate or uh, beginning practitioners. So, thank you so much. Hope this video helped you, even in the smallest way possible. Again, uh, bless you all. Always stay safe and take care.